timely thing at times how the Lord answers prayer. I've just, lately, I've just been deciding to pray specifically about some things. And I've seen the Lord just almost comedically answer those prayers. And one of them was this week. We've had somewhat of a challenging weekend, personally and physically. And uh, we had the invitation to once again, which we did two, three years, two years ago, be the announcer for the music in the castle. And those who know me know that I'm an old band guy. And uh, I love the bands. And my alumni was a competition. Bearcats were there at Jewel Park. And so I, I loved doing it. But I knew it would be physically demanding. I know that you don't have any problem believing that I can talk for 10 hours straight. <laughs> but I was concerned that my voice would be suffering and that my strength would, would not be strong. And so I prayed earlier in the week, Lord, if you would have someone else fill the pulpit Sunday morning, I would show me. Someone said, well, ask Todd. I said, well, Todd's working with me, and he's going to be as tired as I am, and probably more so. So we kind of went through the week with our eyes open just to see what the Lord would have. And I, and I promised the Lord that if he wanted me to do it tired, I'd do it tired. If he wanted me to growl at you, I'd growl at you. I've done it before. But on Thursday evening, we were at the Gideon's dinner, Wonderful. Banquet for pastors. Appreciation of pastors. I think you have more pastors than we've seen in a long time. I'm very thankful. Before I knew it, Gene was coming to speak for us this morning. And so I want to ask Gene Kister to come and share his heart of the Word of God. You say, oh no, Gideon, I'm going to take a nap. You better not. You're going to miss something. I know that Gene is consumed with passion for the Word of God. I've known him most of my life. And I've seen God use him. We've walked together in many paths, and I'm thankful. I believe the Lord has ordained for Gene to come this morning and share the passion of the Word that is effectual to change our world. Elliot was a traveling man. His main job was to make his clients happy, and they did whatever it took to make them happy. He lived in a dysfunctional family, and he got back on Christmas Eve from one of his trips. He, he went to the door, and they never locked the door at his house. But when he went to turn it, the door was locked. And that puzzled him. He went out to his car, and he finally bundled around and found a key, and the key would not open the lock. And he soon realized that his wife had had the locks changed and he was ordered to be away from the house. Despondent he was, he went to a local hotel. He had the necessary tools to end his life. But when he checked into that motel, there laying on the nightstand was a copy of the Word of God that had been placed there by the local Gideons. Some church member or church or organization had thought enough to pay the money to buy that Bible, some get in and carried it up to take it there. And it offended Elliot when it was there. And he took his hand and he swiped it off of the nightstand. And when it hit the floor, the Bible fell open. And this made it even matter. So he took his foot and he kicked that Bible. And under the bed was a solid bed frame and the Bible hit the bed frame and came back out into the room. And it opened again. And mostly out of frustration, he picked it up, and it was open to John chapter 14. And he looked down there at verse 27, and it said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. These were very strange words to this man. And after three days of staying in that motel and counseling with a man that was a pastor where his wife had been attending, seeking the Lord, Elliot accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Christ as a Savior. On Sunday, him and his wife went to church together, and his wife and him both acknowledged their salvation. They joined up with that church, and soon thereafter, the Lord called them into ministry. And this morning, over in Jefferson, North Carolina, Elliot Ossowin is standing behind the pulpit, pulpit as a man of God, preaching the Word of God to the people of God. And to that I say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Gideons are an organization that was formed in 1899. There's a couple still uh, that were charter members. Uh, we got a couple right here at the church here, Ralph Branson and Brandon, Pastor uh, Brandon. We, uh, we're certainly proud to have them part of our organization. Uh, what they did, the idea came through the Lord, gave it to them. These two men were staying in a motel. And they thought, it would be neat if every motel had a Bible and a traveling man could go down to the office and pick up that Bible and read it and have a Bible study and then return it. And they began meeting together and praying and they finally joined up with a third man. And they formed this organization. And they bowed down and prayed and asked the Lord to give them a name. And the first word that came to any one of them was Gideons. So they called the organization Gideons. And then we have record that in 1908, that was nine years later, the first Bibles were bought and placed. 25 Bibles were put in a motel, actually the a hotel back then, in Superior, Montana. Now, I don't know what happened from 1899 to 1908, but having been a member of this church and many other churches, I would assume they formed a committee. And then after nine years, they got about our father's business. And soon thereafter placing those Bibles, we got a letter at the headquarters saying, thank you, Gideons, for placing the Word of God in that hotel because I went there to kill myself. And I took the Bible of poison and threw it out the window, and the Word of God showed me. This Word is powerful. It's rich. And, you know, we believe every word of it. And the amazing thing about it, it has the power to save lives today, just as it did back when it was written. We praise the Lord for that. We have grown a lot in the hundred plus years that we've been handing out Bibles. A lot of you have probably seen one of our little New Testaments. We have the privilege to hand these out in schools, and we have many testimonies. Uh, we have a testimony down in Brazil where some little children take this book because they can't afford books down there in this poor part of Brazil, and they learn to read by reading the Word of God. Isn't that an amazing idea? We can't even have a Bible in their public schools in, in this area because it was kicked out. And as some of you know, I was there when we did that program, when they kicked it out. And I'll never forget meeting down at the city council one night when the little mentally retarded girl addressed the city council. And she said to the councilman who was kicking out the word of God, she said, why do you want to kick the Bible out of schools? And he hung his head. And if my memory served me right, I believe he, he got the end of his tie put in his mouth. And all we could see was the top of his head. And then she said, why don't you kick out the drugs and alcohol out of the schools? And I've many times thought about that. Are our schools any better off today without the Word of God in prayer? No, they're not. But we had that opportunity in some schools. We have to do it on the sidewalk. Some schools we get to actually go in the classroom and do that. We had that privilege down in Piney Flats at Mary Hughes Elementary School. The principal there was saved by reading the Gideon New Testament. He was a, a good basketball player, and he went to church every time the doors were open. And, excuse me, I've got a little thing going on in my throat. I found this water down in Bethany Hall, so I missed an old dollar. <laughs> but anyway, he went to church every Sunday until he was 12 years old, and then his parents called him in. They said, Hank, you've been faithful to go to church every Sunday, and we're going to give you a choice. You can decide whether you want to continue going to church on Sunday with the family or you can stay home. Now, I don't recommend that as something you give a choice to a 12-year-old. But this 12-year-old decided that he would stay home because on Sunday morning, wrestling was on TV, and he loved wrestling. And 
and he would stay home and do that. We got a scholarship to play basketball out in Arizona. And one day they were getting ready to get on a bus and go to Colorado to play a game. He was so far away from home and lonely. And down on the campus he saw some strange looking men in suits and ties and they were handing out little books. And he thought he needed something to read so he went down and got one of those little books and he read it. And Hank accepted the Lord as a Savior out there in Arizona. And when we went down to the school that day, he, he got up and gave his testimony to those students there. And he told them, if you've got any questions, feel free to come. My office door is always open. Around lunchtime, two little boys went down, and they had a question for Hank. They wanted to know what they had to do to ask Jesus in their heart. And he led those two little boys to Christ right there in the school. The following year when we did it, uh, we handed out about 100 scriptures, and the next day one of the parents was back at the school thanking the principal and the assistant principal for allowing the Gideons to come and place, out, place the word of God to their children. And they told them how the little boy had come home that night and accepted Jesus as a Savior. Uh, what a difference this work can make in some lives. We also have the opportunity to hand out uh, Bible and colleges uh, and universities around the world and many testimonies of where they've worked. And in your bulletin today that uh, was handed to you, there's a, a wonderful story about a student in Kenya that uh, accepted the Lord through one of these testaments. Uh, we'll mention a few minutes about an offering, I'm sure, today that uh, you'll want to purchase scripture. We have, uh, we'll be taking an offering, I'm sure, but there's an envelope there. If you're not prepared, you can go on in later. There's a form where you can use your credit card do that. Know that when you give money to the Gideons, 100% of the money that you give goes to purchase scripture. A hotel Bible costs $5. So you can do the math. If you'd write a check today for Gideons for $500, you would place $100. $100 would place $20. If you could only give $5, you would buy one. These little New Testaments cost $1.30. So you can do the math there. Every little bit helps. We also, the auxiliary, which is the wives of Gideons, are active in placing Bibles in lawyers' office, and doctors' and dentist offices. In November, we'll be actually going back out to the Bristol Regional Medical Center. We've been offered the opportunity to place the Word of God there. We, we did that on the opening facility, and we're going back down to make sure every room has a copy of God's Word. We do that through the churches. See, we're a missionary arm of your church. Uh, chances are, if this church wanted to go and place Bibles in the school, the door wouldn't be open, but you do it through us. And we couldn't buy all the Bibles with just us, so it's a partnership that works. It's worked for over 100 years. We also have the privilege to hand out the Word of God in nursing homes. I was talking to Phil Rust during the service. He said he ran into our Giddings a couple of weeks ago down at Cambridge House, handing out Bibles. Uh, that summer, Giddings uh, from one church that went through that. A couple weeks prior to that, Ralph and I and several other Giddings went out and handed out the Word of God out here at National Health Care and at Bristol Nursing Home. It's amazing how that uh, when you go there, a lot of those Bibles have been taken. Maybe when the family left, they took the Bibles and we replaced them. But I had the opportunity at, at NHC to see two people that I knew since I was a little bitty kid. And, and I looked them in the eye and I, I said, hi, how you doing? And, and, and they, they had no remembrance of who it was. But we know that there's some people that even at that late age, they've never been aware of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's why we do it. And it's there for the families to read to them. So we thank God for that privilege that we have. Uh, a lot of individual testimonies we have down through the years of people that have been saved. 